Class is back in session. <laughs> hey, so before Jay gets into the next session of this, um, I just wanted to point something out. Notice when he's doing his jury selection how individualized he is with the person who, is, who he's talking to, right? He moves to them, wherever they are. He's with them, very intimate, right? So Josh Carton, who's one of my teachers, always says, you don't try a case to a jury. You try a case to one juror at a time. Okay? And it's a great metaphor to think about. Because when we're together, it's a witnessed event. But the way I treat you in this exchange makes it okay and safe, or it doesn't, for us to continue to have honest discourse with each other. Right? So Jay did a, is doing a masterful job, and, but it's worth taking a minute to note that. When he comes up here, you know, he's got a great personality and a great way with people, but it's much more than that. It's a very intentional, learned process where you have a moment, we connect for real, so this is real, and what happens is you're watching this. Everybody's watching how we're interacting with each other. And so now when I come to you, and even in this room, we were talking about it's lawyers, but some of us even have anxiety. Is he going to call on me in the room here now, right? Because we still, we're not immune from that. So the way he treats you is going to continue to make it okay. There are a few times when he would start to question somebody back, and he's got a very nice way of doing it, right? Where he's almost like, so are you saying, you know, blah, 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 blah. And, um, and, and even that. It's a, it's, it's a witnessed event. You've, if you try cases enough, you've seen situations where your lawyer, may have even been you, inadvertently attacked somebody, right? Like you just had the, you want to grab the words and pull them back into your mouth, or somebody else did it. It's great when someone else does it, um, but not so great when you're the one who does it. But the, you, get, you get the point. The point is that he's doing a masterful job of that. Don't let the, don't let that, um, get lost right. in the process. I, I appreciate that. And it's purposeful. I mean, I, I genuinely, the people know me, I genuinely like people and I like talking to people. And one of my favorite things to do is to have a bourbon and smoke a cigar. In fact, there's a cigar bar in town I'm going to go to probably today and, ha and spend a couple hours just have a cigar. Like, that's what I like to do. I got my bourbon cigar socks on today on top of my muted suit. So, um, but I, I want to treat the jurors because they don't want to, no one wants to be there. They hate being there. Um, I, I want to treat them like, you know, like we're sitting down having a beer together and just chat and get to know them. And I also love the way we started with making, you know, kind of rule number one to persuade people is meet them where they really are. So where they, we, the way he did that is he started by saying, if this were optional, the room would probably be empty, right? He probably wouldn't want to be here. Yeah, and I, I trained all last year during COVID. I did a private session. I did a private group with Sari Delamont on, from Hostage Giro, and that's where I learned a lot of this stuff. And that's and, I, and, it, and it, it kind of freed me up on how I pick juries. It, and I, I always liked it before, but this one was the most fun I ever had, and and the and the um, you know most confident I probably ever had picking a jury. So, um, but it's personal when I talk and I move, but I don't want to spend too much time. And in my trial, we had some jurors that were just, you know. One guy was this know-it-all, and I mean, he was a lot to handle. So I made sure if he did talk, I would pivot quickly without cutting him off or him thinking I'm cutting him off. Because if it's just me one-on-one -on -one with one person too long, the rest of the jurors go, well, why are we even here? But it's okay to go a couple in and then bo like bob and move, like cross-examination. Um, so let's do a little bit on the meth part. I'll, I'll tell you how I got into it, and then uh, I'll do some opening stuff. So now... Picture yourself, we're back picking the jury. You've been here about an hour and a half. We got through road construction and road edge drop offs and safety and all this stuff and contracts. And then now I say, so there's something else we need to talk about. You know, it's, it's the elephant in the room. And Darren Carroll is over here. He was the one, I can tell you, I can't tell you everything, but he was the one driving the truck that hit and killed our client's mother. You'll learn that 
he had trace amounts of drugs in his system but was not impaired. It was methamphetamine. Who here knows someone or has heard about someone testing positive at work? A drug test. Anyone knows? Or have a job where drug testing is required? Anyone? Yes. Military, right? You told me that earlier. Okay, so let me ask you. Um, obviously, you know that, that's that's a serious matter. In the military, is testing positive? Is that is it is it like a no, zero tolerance situation? Yeah, uh, he's an officer, so the officer's 100% that makes sense. Okay. The fact he tested positive for cocaine, having done it days earlier, does that? mean he was impaired at the time the testing was taken? Yeah. 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 I appreciate that. Anyone else either knows someone or has been in a job where they do drug testing? Medical field, teachers, anyone here have any examples? Yes, sir. Thanks for raising your hand. But what I'm hearing is that it was in the medical field, someone showed up at the hospital or for a procedure, and people noticed that person acting erratically. Right. Okay. So there were some signs that maybe this person maybe had some level of impairment. Right. And I heard you say earlier that the person wasn't impaired here. Um, but in this situation, it might be a lot of Okay. I appreciate that. So let, let's talk about that. Just because someone fails a drug test or tests positive with a substance in their system, does that mean they're impaired? Do you have any thoughts on that? Yes. Uh, no, I, I think it just means that they're impaired at the time. So I'm kind of wondering why that's an issue in this case, because if this gentleman was not uh, impaired at the time, why are we even talking about it? Sure. No, I, pre no, I, I appreciate that. And that's, the, the, is that important? Would that be important for you to know? I can't tell you all the case right now, but if you're on this jury and we're in this case, would it be important to know what evidence there is about whether Mr. Carroll was or wasn't impaired? Would that be important for people to know? Yeah. Don, tell me about that. I think the testing is zero tolerance, right? It impairs any, can't do any impairment, any kind of substance in a person's system. It shouldn't be the kind of way Okay. I, no, I appreciate you telling me that. Anyone else feel the same way? Have similar thoughts? Yes, ma'am. Sure. So let, let me, and I appreciate everything you've shared so far, but let's get to the heart of this and what I'm allowed to do. Again, I can't tell you everything, but the fact that you're going to hear evidence if you're in this jury that Darren Carroll tested positive for methamphetamine, he had done crystal meth, the fact that he tested positive after this crash without hearing any other evidence, without hearing anything else. Who here believes that that puts Mr. Carroll 
not on a level playing field with everyone else. It's kind of a strike against him going, you, dude, you, you had meth in your system, tested positive. It's gotta be your fault. Who here has thoughts like that? Okay, so at that part, we paused and all these hands went up, real life. And I know, I know from, again, same judge two years earlier on my suspended license issue, I had 23 jurors come up and he wants to do cause challenges. Every judge is different. One takeaway, if you haven't tried a case in front of a, this a particular judge or haven't in a while, make sure to find out his or her procedures for cause challenges. Because I've had judges say, do it in the moment, in front of everyone. I've had judges say, sidebar. I've had judges say, I don't do cause challenges until jury selection's over, until you're done, toward the end, and then we can bring it up. And that's really hard because memories fade and stuff. This judge wants them at that time, sidebar, call them up individually. So all these hands went up. And Judge goes, Mr. Vaughn, can we approach? He goes, yeah, he goes, this is going to take a while. I said, yep. I said, Judge. He goes, spend license? I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, we're going to take a break. And then I brought them up one by one by one by one that raised their hand. And the way we do it in Boone County, Kentucky, is we had 59 there initially. If you count 12 jurors, two alternates, that's 14. We had, at the time, three parties at trial, four peremptory strikes each. Um, so 12, 26, three strikes for regular and then for alt. So 26 jurors lets you pick a panel and have enough people left if everyone uses their peremptory strikes. So I got to question 26 at once. They were on this side of the room. And you all are here, but I can't talk to you. You can't answer. And you're sitting there going, this is stupid. And, and then if you get let off and you get put on, I can't go back through all my questions. The judge says, Sir, would you have said yes to any of Mr. Vaughn's questions? It's really hard with math. They go, yes, and there's just one after another. Come on up. What would we say? Math. Okay. And then I would have to vordire them individually sidebar with the white noise on. And if you all have any interest, I have the, the entire trial is on video, but it's broken down and it's all labeled. And every cause challenge I did on meth is labeled cause number 15 dash meth. And if you ever want to see how I walk the jurors into cause challenges, I can share the links. I may have already sent it to Dan. Yes. How do we, how do we access it? I sent all, after I did the case analysis, I sent everything to Dan, the whole trial from the, the program. So it's on Trial Lawyers University. I think all my videos are there. So before you leave here, make sure to find out how to do that or sign up for it. I believe it's all there. But I would, our, our, in another takeaway, I don't know how you all pick juries, but something that's been invaluable to me on getting jurors off for cause is I weave in the case law into my questions. Kentucky is a level playing field state. Saying that, knowing that, does that put so-and-so, does that mean my client's not a level playing field with the defendant before you start trial, before you hear any evidence? Does that mean there's a strike against them? They go, well, I don't know how I feel about that evidence. Well, would that put you in the gray area? That's case law in Kentucky. If they're in the gray area, they're out gone, done. There is no such thing as rehabilitation in Kentucky. There is no magic question. Once they commit, they should be out. So I use all that and I do a bench brief to the judge with all the case law and the, all the cases highlighted. And then I walk him down the line. Well, you, sir, you said yes to meth. I appreciate you telling me that. And listen, I mean, no one likes meth, but I, I mean, you, you raised your hand. Does that mean not knowing anything else, the fact that you know Darren, you heard Darren Carroll was on meth, it'll be hard for you to sit here and, and be a fair and partial juror going forward knowing that he drove that truck on meth and hit the woman and killed her. Is that how you're feeling right now? Sure, sure. Um, but knowing that, and that's a, I appreciate that point. You listen to what the judge says, but you know, when I can't talk to you after this. And if you're in that jury room and there's going to be points of disagreement, points of friction, when you're sitting there and now there's points of disagreement and we're talking about paving companies and stuff, you're going to have that little birdie on your shoulder going, but the guy had meth in the system. He's doing crystal meth. Why the hell am I here? can't say, well, it's going to be hard for you, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah and to be honest, I mean, you, you obviously, I mean, I don't, we don't know each other, but uh, you're trying to honestly, I think, credibly answer my questions, but it, it would cause some difficulty, wouldn't it? it might. Yeah, it might, and it could put you in that gray area. You don't know how it's going to impact you, right? It's all happened, yeah, yeah. And then I was walking down the line, and the, and the boom, I'd get him off for cause. Right there, that answer was enough for me to get him off for cause, if the judge follows the law. That was enough. And he said it, was going, it might be difficult. That's all I need. And it's good that's sidebar, right? That's all sidebar. Do you notice he's now a cross-examiner? 
I, I, he got you on notice for the that. difference. <laughs> you notice the difference in style, right? I want your ass off the jury. So I'm no longer playing Mr. Nice Guy with you. I'm going to cut your throat if I need to, and you're going to freaking say, I'm going to keep questioning you until you say you're either in a gray area or because I want you off the jury. And that's fine. That's the decision. Also, I'm going to put you on the spot for, for a second. Go ahead. Did you notice that when he pivoted into, um, into the meth that he became defensive? Did you notice that it was... I'm going to tell you about meth, but he's not, he's not impaired, and he's not, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm, going to, I'm going to protect this as much as I possibly can. We do that. We are humans. Unless we train ourselves and practice to not do that, we can't help it. We don't want to give. But if you really want to get rid of as many jurors at that point, you might, you might consider not saying about the impairment and just saying, you're going to learn that he that he tested positive for meth, and that's um, going to be an issue in this case, isn't it? Yes, an issue for you. We. It's an issue for me. Who else? Make it okay for them to raise their hand, right? And now you've got the strategy that you've got, which might be to have them one by one up, but it might also be to say, so should we just go home? Right, this, the, this, the, um, the old trial lawyer college method of doing this would be to just sit there in the discomfort of it. And everybody has said, yeah, meth, 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 that's a big problem in the case. So should we just go home? I mean, you remember we talked about all that, all that um, roadway safety and all that. Should we just all go home at this point? Somebody might say yes, and that's okay. That's perfect because that's what's going to lead you to other cause. But somebody might at that point say, well, wait a minute. Did the road contractor screw this damn thing up? Thank you for saying that. Are you willing, are you open to the possibility that maybe that is as big an issue or a bigger issue than the meth? Yeah. And that then leads to them coming up with things like, yeah, what kind of tests do they do? I mean, does that mean he's impaired? They're coming up with it, mm -hmm. and when they come up with it, it's a lot more powerful. So I didn't mean to go on this long. No, but, it's fine. No, no, but, it's good, but, and that, but, that's important. I mean, yeah, to embrace it better and just to sit in the discomfort. It, you it's, know. it's really hard to do. If yeah. you're going to do it, you got to practice doing it. Yeah. Because, but, but I'll tell you, just like he said about how freeing it became for him by working with Sorry, and whatever, whether it's Sorry or somebody else, I promise you, you can be free in jury selection. If jury selection is something that you find particularly challenging, there are resources now. There are ways to do this now in a way that's going to be consistent with your personality and who you are and, and whatever fears you bring to the table, where those things, those things actually become your superpower in, do, in doing it. So if you're, if you're interested in that, you should look at things like Trial Lawyers College or Spence Method or some of these other things that allow you to really find those things in you and, 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 and present them in a way that's, um, that is um, acceptable to the jury. Perfect. No, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say before I do opening, um, I'm just going to do like a 10, 15 minute part. The opening was an hour, so I'm not doing an hour opening. God. Um, but I'll do about 10 minutes. I'm going to incorporate the boards. I'm going to probably skip to some of the liability stuff because I want you to see the boards in action instead of just the talking about the case part. So I'm going to like break it up in pieces um, for that reason. But yeah, please, I want anything on jury selection, Vordire, all that stuff. I say Vordire because I went to public school in Kentucky. I, I, I've heard it's called Vaudeer, but. I don't know. Yeah, go ahead. So, 
question was in, in Kentucky, in our jurisdiction, if I bring up meth and they go, oh, you know, I think I can be fair, I don't know, is that enough to bring them up for cause? I'll, I'll give you two answers. In general, let's say it's not meth. It's, you know, there's a personal injury lawsuit and I just don't like them, or I don't know how I feel about it. There's a car wreck case, fine. Depend on the judge, I can say, judge, can we approach? Hey, you know, I, I think I want to move your, you know, 12 for cause, but I need to board hire him individually. And that, that particular judge would make me do that and bring him up and say, Jared, number 12, coming up here. Some judges want me to go further and expose it more out to the group, which I don't like because it changes my tone. I go from let's have a bourbon and cigar together to I'm going to punch you in the throat. And, you know, a couple times a judge in our trial was like, Jay, you're, you're leading them. You're, you're crossing them. Like, the defense lawyer wasn't objecting. I'm like, but they're, they're letting me do it. But so, yeah, the meth part, but because meth is so sensitive, because the judge knew what happened in the trial two years earlier with my guy in the suspended license, meth was such a sensitive topic. The moment anyone just says, you yeah, have an issue with meth, because the question was, I phrased it better at trial, not today, I apologize, but it was basically, you're, I didn't lead with he had meth, I led with drug testing and stuff, but then I said, you're gonna learn that Darren Carroll had methamphetamines in his system. Hearing that alone, not hearing anything else, some people would be like, it's his fault. What? It's, it, who is already there in their mind that without hearing anything else, they think that he's partially at fault already. I don't say fully, just partially. If he's coming in partially at fault, that's enough. And that judge, the moment I got that and got hands up, he's like, let's take a break. This is going to take a while. Bring them up one by one. And we wrote down all the people raising their hands. So because that judge didn't want it out. So what was part two? Yeah. Right, and that's how, like, some trials in Ohio I've done. I mean, I had a jury once said, shit happens. I go, <laughs> oh, what? Yeah. I think that I know you're saying you think you can be fair, and you're trying to be the most honest you can right now, saying I think you'd be fair, but really when you get back to that jury room and you're in those points of disagreement and argument, you know, it's, it's, it, 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 it's, it, it's kind of like, you know, you can't go back, and you can't come back and say, well, how am I feeling now about this? Where are my thoughts? you know, now about this, because um, you're in that jury room. So saying, I think I can be fair, you know, but, but now you're in that moment and you're having to make a decision as to whether someone's at fault or not. And it's going, it's, if it's lingering, if it's that bird on the shoulder going, well, I think I can be fair, but God, it's meth. It's, it's a whiplash case. That's what I need to know. I need you to dig deep and be honest with me about that, because you're not in the jury room right now. And I can't question you later. I can't say halfway through trial, hey, how do you feel about meth right now? And hey, there's other ways I do it, but that's Jay, uh, yeah. Jay just um, uh, there's usually something that happens before you get to the I can be fair. That's usually some type of a rehabilitative question. So when someone gives you the negative, like, you know, I do think about this meth stuff. Was well, there anything that I could say that would change your mind about that? Your answer is probably going to be no. Is there anything? that the defense counsel could say that would change your mind about that? Is there anything the judge could say that would change your mind about that? What have I done? I've, I've taken away a little bit, or at least I'm, it's my best effort to take away the judge's question of, well, you think you can be fair, can't you? And so you might want to even quantify it. How strongly do you feel like, how strongly do you feel about that on a scale of one to 10? About an eight? Sounds like about an eight to me. And now you've, now you've got something quantifiable and you've got Nothing that anybody can say is going to change your mind about that. So you've got steadfast. Mm -hmm. You've got some of the things that the Supreme Court has looked at in the past yeah. about, about those kind of things. Yeah. Those are just some, some suggestions. But I think, you know, jury selection is, is a, so intensely personal of a process, and there's all these different ways to go about doing it. And it, what, what I'm excited to see is you got all these different sort of methods that people have taught through the years, and now what's starting to happen through organizations is we're starting to do these true comparative things where people are bringing and looking for ways about how can we synthesize sort of best practices from different schools of thought, because 
there's you know generally what Jay said, I turn, I, I, I go from being inclusive to being exclusive, right? And there's a very different energy in the room. You could feel it when you, when you watched him just doing it in a mock situation. So imagine in a real situation, you can feel the, the difference in energy of, I'm looking for, my, my type of jury selection is I'm looking for a way that I can keep you. The harder you make that for me, the more I'm looking for a way that I can keep you. That's the energy I want in there. And so, you know, it's, it's, worth, it's worth thinking about if you're going to take that kind of an approach, then how do you ever deal with cause in a juror? And, you know, we could talk about that another another occasion, but yeah. that's a, I know yeah. you want to move into opening. Yeah, no, no, good. No, I pre no, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. That's why you're here. So we can bounce stuff back and do different methods. I mean, it's, we're all here to learn. So um, anything else in Vordire before I get to some opening stuff? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> next question. My next question is trial is a federal court, and I'm scared about not being able to get through all these issues in the short amount of time we're going to get with the jury. I mean, is the judge even giving you attorney Vordire? He might give us half an hour. Yeah, I mean, it's just a. Uh... So, how do you pick? How do I answer that? Go ahead. What's your answer? My answer is I get right to the issue. Yep, that's what I was going to say. Just, pick, pick whatever yeah. the issue is and go. I, I believe that, uh, first of all, I'll tell you, I mean, you know, somebody, you know, I mean, I've spent a lot of time in the last number of years trying to figure out how to shorten trials. My vordires go very short, and I, I offer the judge the deal of if you let me do jury selection the way I want to do it, which is open and have a discussion, I'll cut the time down. I'll do it in an hour. Otherwise, it might take me three. And that's, you know, that's um, something that some judges go, you'll do it in an hour, I'll give you 30 minutes. I'll say, if you give me 30 minutes or I have to ask the questions where all I get is this, I'll take the 30 minutes. And then you just get, you know, I, I really do think that about 70% of the questions we typically ask on jury selection, really at the end of the day, we do it because it was on somebody's list some time ago and we've stolen that list. Or how many people here it will admit to your next jury trial, you're just going to pull your last damn four dire that you did, and that's going to be the default four dire that you're going to do, you know, on the next one. So the, the, the point is, the, if you bring intentionality to the, the process, if you, look at, if you look at the jury selection you typically do, I think you'll find that most, many, most, more than 50% of the questions you ask don't really give you an answer that helps you make an informed decision about the jurors. Yeah. But I if, mean, it, what I would do is I would not, I mean, if you only got 30, you only got a short period of time, I'm not asking any questions about how do you feel about giving money and big verdicts and all that crap. I'm just whatever the biggest issue is. I'm going to hit it, deal with it. My time runs out. At least I got some impression. Going to math. Meth. I mean, so let me, let me go over a little bit of the opening. Uh, I'll probably do like 10 minutes of it. I'll use the boards and then we'll talk about it. Um, and then we'll take a break, and then we'll come back and do some closing stuff, do some boards, play the clips, talk about it, and then I'm off the hook and I can drink. So, um, I'm not joking. Um, so, uh, preface it with, I mean, I've, I've, I, mean I've, I grew up, you know, I, and I do this in jury selection sometimes. I mean, I, I, was, I grew up redhead being called Carrot Top and Opie Cunningham. So I have thick skin and it's hard to, I don't get my feelings hurt much. I didn't give the opening or closing, my partner did. So, you know, I'm going to give it the way I would give it. Um, but I don't have a podium, so I'm carrying my notes and I don't like that, but I have nowhere to put it. So, um, so we'll just get into it and then I'll jump around because I want to do a little bit of opening hook and then I'm going to get to the boards and, and I think you'll see the good boards about what happened in opening and I'll tell you something that you don't know that I couldn't tell in jury selection that when the jurors heard it, it just like they're they just went, holy shit. 